Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look and reviewing a couple of American single malts. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to start with is discussing, in my opinion, the differences between American single malts and Scottish single malts a little bit. Now, of course, we're all familiar with fantastic Scottish single malts. Been doing it for hundreds of years. Um, you know, there can be greatness found in each and every age of Scottish single malts. I've had, again, amazing three-year-olds all the way to some fantastic 50-year-olds and so on. But the thing about American malts is when they first began, to me it seemed like, you know, we were... We were learning. We were kind of learning on the fly, right? I mean, we had the distillation techniques that we learned from Scottish distillers. We had the Scottish style stills. And, you know, I'm thinking about coinage right now. And then you also had other uh, branch out distilleries like West uh, Westland. I remember Westland came out and they were doing a sherry finish and so on and a peated version. And they were really nice and really solid. And I liked them all. Uh, and of course, there's some phenomenal single casts coming out along the way from each of those. And then you get, start to see more and more people doing it, more distilleries doing it. Well, recently, uh, Westward uh, has come onto the scene, and they've been doing an amazing job with their single cast selections. I will say, their core line is really good. I've gotten to taste through it. I enjoy it. But for me, somebody who's you know, spent a lot of time in single malls and big bourbons and stuff. I love, you know, big flavored whiskeys. And sometimes I like to say that I've got an old leather tongue, right? It's like little 80 proof stuff just doesn't quite do it for me anymore. I got to have this 132.84 as in this one right here, which was selected by AJ's Liquor in Plano and the Plano Whiskey Society. Uh, but yeah, that's right. 132.84 proof for $100. And then you have this one right here, the Thompson Bookstore uh, selection. This one was 129.78 proof, again, $100. And to me, we're going to get to the nosing and tasting. What blew me away about these was the amount of fruit. Um, so much fruit, so much flavor complexity, long, long finishes. And I was just like, yeah, I need as many of these as I can possibly find. And what I mean by that is like, when I see another store pick, I'm going to have to get one and taste it. I got to find, because they're different. Each and every one of them are a little different. So, and I really wanted to do these two side by side to showcase that. Okay. All right. Starting with the AJ Liquor uh, Plano pick. And again, I will say, of all the ones I've tasted, and I've had like five or, five or so now, they're different, but there's also some nuances that do carry through, and we'll talk about that between these two. So you can kind of get an understanding that even though you're going to maybe pick in a different state or different city or whatever, you're gonna, there's going to be a little core essence that runs the lineage through all of them. All right? All right, here we go. AJ's Liquor. Wow, yeah. Big, big nose. Sour. <laughs> The sour fruits, and again, I'm thinking the basket of fruits. We got peaches and apricots. We've got plums in there as well. Chocolate, lots of lots of chocolate. A little clove, a little cinnamon. Tropical fruits as well. So not only are you getting those orchard fruits, now you're getting really ripe papaya, a little hint of guava. Maybe in a little bit of mango as well. So super tropical. And I think that's going to be the lineage. Okay, that's the connector of even this one or all the other ones I've had. A tropical note of really nice papaya and probably mango. All right. To be honest, the nose is a little tight because we're at such a high ABV. A lot of times it's just going to be snug. And you're not going to pull a lot from the nose. So I always recommend kind of blowing it out, kind of resetting it, trying to nose it from a distance. Again, I'm breathing through my mouth and nose at the same time to not burn myself with the high ABB. Yeah, so not super complex on the nose. Uh, but again, all those really unique fruits are just piling on. All right, so now 
reset my nose and I'm going to compare it nose wise to the Thompson bookstore pick here. Golly. Kind of the same. Again, that real tropical note comes through. The overripe pipe, uh, papaya. A little bit of pineapple in this one. Guava for sure. A little bit of mango in there. The pineapple's a little bit the unique one here. But there's also a really nice earthiness to this one. Big spice. Big again, okay, You get too far in the glass, it's going to burn you a little bit. Almonds. Sweet almonds in here. A little bit of a orange oil. But there's also an, that earthiness. Ah, it's so good. It reminds me of a an incense. Almost like a... It's not quite Palo Santo, but it's close to that. Almost like a... What's it? That other pinion wood. Kind of that kind of sandalwood. That's in here. A nice solish, uh, sour polish note as well. Mahogany wood. That's ridiculous. Okay. So, two phenomenal noses that I will tell you will probably get better with a drop or two of water. Okay. But, we're going to go ahead and taste them as is. 132.84 for the AJ Liquor. Here we go. In the Plano Whiskey Society. Oh my goodness. That's ridiculous. That's beyond a wow, right? A lot of times I'll give it a wow when it's like shocks me like, oh my goodness, that's so good. It's beyond that. I mean, Westward killed it on this one. Mmm. So much fruit. Caramel honey, glazed fruit. Again, with the apricots, the peaches, the plums, you get the, I would say, kind of like a... Oh, and then it's just giving a little transition. You do get a little bit of pineapple on the palate. Lots more papaya. Lots more guava on this one. A little bit of the mango characteristic. As it rolls and starts lingering into the back end, that's where you start noticing a little bit of the little bit of earthiness in this one as well. And I think that is developed as this is oxidized. Okay, when it first picked it up, I didn't pick up that much earthiness on it. I am getting it now a little bit. Oh, here we go. A little citrus oil in it. It's hard to, and I'm just going to call it citrus oil because it is kind of a combination of a little, little lemon, a little orange, maybe even a little lime. You get all that, you get the tropical fruits, and then, of course, you get all those orchard fruits as well. They get the chocolate. This really nice, kind of a little bit of an old, it's kind of a combination of new and old leather on the back end. Oh, it's so, so good. So, so good. All right. So, I love that one. I know this is going to take a double rinse. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and add, use a dropper or a straw if you have. I'm just going to put it, that was about two drops in there, maybe three. But now we're going to taste the Thompson Bookstore Pig. Again, nose a little muted, just from the high ABV. And I'm not sure how many bottles they got out of each barrel. I don't, I'm going to have to put my glasses to check a look at this label. Um, I mean, this says bottle 15. They don't really tell you Bottle 28. They don't really tell you how many bottles were in each one. I'm guessing it's going to be 150, 100, maybe 70-ish, depending on how full the, the barrels were. Uh, so not a lot to go around. That's why come. you'll see, you know, groups pick them, and then they usually sell pretty quickly. All right? All right, Thompson's Bookstore. Hmm. Medium high viscosity, by the way. Pretty much both of these. Medium high viscosity. And it's not a lot that get to that level. These get there. So oily. Oh my goodness, this one's funny. Alright, here we go. It's 
sweet, rich, almost like Werther's caramel, almost like butterscotchy. The way it kind of enters, but more, I would say, no, not butterscotch. Mm, it's close. It's almost a combination of butterscotch, brown sugar, and caramel. Those triplets together. You get that little tropical fruit. But it's not as bright as this one. This one's very vibrant with those orchard fruits and the tropical fruits. This one has that in there, but it's a little more subdued. Because what you're actually picking up, to me, is a lot of raw honeycomb. And you're picking up almost like the malty base, really heavy. And this big earthiness. And to me, the earthiness reminds me of being at a, I don't know, Cypress Hill concert or a Pink Floyd show. Something like that. Okay, that dank in the air smell comes through in this on the palate. Yeah, very, very unique. But the honey, the honey, raw honey note lingering, driving all the way into the finish. That little toasted uh, cocoa in there. Um, Again, there's like this toasted sweet almond thing, and then you get that cocoa note just shaved on top as well. It's 129 proof whiskey that drinks like it's a very, very rich 10110. Yeah, enters big malt, all those sweet characteristics. Lots of the tropical fruit, that little herbal thing going on and that big earthiness kind of just layering and it just rolls to me it's kind of got it's a little bit of a roasted nuttiness characteristic as well some kind of like a you know sometimes on those pea berry coffee beans they'll get real fruity a little bit of that in there as well with that earthiness so this one is very very dark and dense to whereas this one was very big and fruity okay I love them both for two different reasons and ah, it just yeah so as you can tell I love these so I think you should be out there looking for these wherever you see the westward the thing to look for is they're gonna have this little bronze little placard down at the bottom I wouldn't hesitate if it's a hundred dollars it's still it's worth it because it, like I said of the ones I've had even the lesser bottles are not that much lit like they're above and beyond a lot of other whiskeys out there on the shelves okay so again join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound if you enjoy this kind of content uh, you can help support me there and help me keep self-funding these bottles so you get these type of honest reviews and of course you're going to get everything two weeks early you're going to get them ad free uh, private review library all sorts of stuff but anyway regardless of where you're watching uh, thank you for being here I agree, uh, appreciate each and every one of you and the comments you leave, and I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.